These days, due to social media, it's becoming easier than ever to compare yourself to other guitar players. When your timeline is constantly filled with guitarists that can play at lightning fast speeds, write better riffs than you, and utilize an arsenal of techniques at the blink of an eye you can only ever dream of doing, it can leave you feeling a little bit insecure about your own personal journey with the instrument. In this video, I'll be lifting the veil on why it appears so many guitar players on the internet seem to be leagues ahead of you, and provide some personal insight to help you look at your progress on the guitar in a healthier and more fulfilling way. Let's get to it. To first understand the problem, you've got to ask yourself, are all these guitar players actually that much better than you? At a glance, the answer is a resounding yes. But when we peel the layers back, we start to realize two very important things. The first thing is, algorithms play a huge role in what we see in our timelines, and we are often seeing the top 20% of guitarists from around the world 80% of the time in our feeds. Technique-driven playing seems to do extremely well on social media when in front of the right audiences. This is because this type of playing has a wow factor element and often elicits a lot of engagement when coupled with clever marketing or some luck. Taking this into account, you'll realize that most of what you see in terms of technical ability and skill on the guitar on social media is just a microcosm of what the reality actually is. The second thing to take into account is the objectivity of what constitutes being good at the guitar. Have you ever met an absolute beast of a guitar player say that they weren't that good? Or maybe heard some of your favorite players repeat the same? With something as multifaceted as guitar playing, it can be difficult to pinpoint what exactly good even means. It's all subjective. We'll get into this a little bit more later in this video when we start talking about vanity metrics and how they might be impacting how you view your own guitar playing without you even realizing it. For now, let's make a few things clear when it comes to playing the dangerous game of comparison between you and other guitarists. Starting off, why is it bad to compare yourself to another guitar player in the first place anyway? Well, technically it's not a bad thing. What can end up being detrimental to you has more to do with how you react to the comparison. How are you reacting when you see a 10-year-old girl shredding some Yngwie riffs on TikTok? How are you reacting when you see someone play flawless covers of songs you've been trying to learn for the past 12 years on YouTube? If your immediate response to seeing things like this is to feel bad about yourself, you've got a big problem. You are not them and only see a small part of their lives with them sharing their guitar playing. They may or may not have had some advantages in this specific area that allowed them to be able to perform at an exceptional level, but that's not really any of your business because you can't change that. What you can change, however, is the meaning you tie to their excellence. Instead of feeling jealousy or devaluing yourself, choose to take inspiration from what they've shared on social media to help you improve in the areas of your playing that you'd like to. View their content as an example of what is possible and not what you are missing inside of yourself. Still, even with this outlook, you will need to reset the reality being shown to you by the algorithms. Let's break this down. Not that long ago, I was in a Discord community filled with a lot of guitar players jamming out with them. One guy there was going on about how much better every guitar player online was than him. By all means, he was a reasonably good player, but he was comparing himself to the 20% of guitarists I mentioned earlier. This insecurity he experienced comes from a lack of understanding of basic economics, marketing, and how social media algorithms influence what we see online. I'll put the pieces together for you. In economics, there's something called the law of supply and demand. To make it simple, supply is how much of something there is, and demand is how much and how many want that thing. Although all markets have different sizes, it's safe to say that regardless of how small niche guitar markets can be, that not many guitar players are going to be able to play at the highest levels, which means supply is low for the people that can produce certain types of content. So everyone that finds the technical guitar playing content entertaining will all naturally be pulled into the realm and radars of the few that can fulfill demand for this need. When this happens, with other conditions, the algorithm will begin to push that content in front of more and more people it believes will engage with it. And guess what? 
if you play the guitar, it will get to you sooner or later. It's an illusion, because that type of content performs so well it almost appears to be the standard for guitar players, when the truth is it's really the exception. You're just seeing it all the time. Remember that. Soon, I'll be defining the characteristics guitar players should be using to measure themselves in a healthy way. But as promised, let's finally touch base on vanity metrics. Outside of playing the guitar itself, you may also compare yourself to other guitarists based on the views and likes they receive on social media, and other nuanced things like their notoriety, careers, gear, and anything else under the sun that they have that you don't. This is a losing battle, and serves absolutely no benefit to your life if it is not being used as a source of inspiration. Also, there may be things going on behind the scenes that would totally shock you. In business, there is a term called a vanity metric. This is essentially a thing that is measured that doesn't help you meet a goal. It's essentially useless information that you can't do anything with. A lot of the numbers you see on social media are vanity metrics, and if they aren't your own numbers, they definitely are. If you use social media casually, it's best to just ignore these things. If you are using it as a tool to reach your goals, only compare the numbers that matter to the goals you've set for yourself. Everything else is just noise. Finally, I'd like to talk about the things that really do matter when you are judging your own guitar playing. I've noticed that for a lot of people, technique has been the primary determining factor to say whether a player is good or not, when this is absolutely false. I think that in order to provide a healthy perspective on what constitutes a good guitarist, technique must be left out of the equation, as some styles of music lend themselves more towards technical playing than others do. Also, an individual's technique will change over time, whether they're a beginner or an expert. So you might be asking yourself, if it's not technique that makes a good guitar player, what does? In my opinion, I believe that the three things guitar should be using to measure their skill level are their ability to take ideas from their head and play them on the fretboard, their ability to practice deliberately, and how much joy they get out of playing the instrument. I'm not going to say why I think these things are important, as I believe there's value in sitting on these things and figuring it out on your own. Maybe put your thoughts on why in the comment section. Hopefully by now you have a greater insight into why it appears that so many guitar players on social media are better than you, and realize that it's not actually the case. I also hope you've gained insights that you can use to better navigate social media and create a healthier outlook for your own playing. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. May your coming days bring you peace, joy, and opportunity. Until next time.